Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. In this bonus episode, we're going to see all the dialogue that we can get after Chapter 7 and before starting Chapter 8. You look like you don't know nothing, so I'll teach you something. How about that? There are ruins beneath us, and you can go down there and find these pipes that... Huh? You already knew that? Fine, Mr. Brilliant. I'll have a better tip next time. You told us that last time. Hey, you don't have any good jobs, do you? You know, easy work, mind-blowing pay. It'd be great if I could get a paid a lot to sleep. Yeah, this is a job for me. Sounds like this guy wants to do, like, scientific studies. You can sometimes get paid to sleep for that. <laughs> you smell that? Something doesn't smell quite right. No, indeed you don't. I can't really place it. I just got a really bad feeling, like something really awful is gonna happen soon. Well, that's not ominous. Hey, yo! Thanks to you, I've sold out of everything. You're the king of shoppers. Just wanted to show that that's what he says now. Ancient prophecy discovered. When the moon shines bright, the end will draw near. Maybe that's what's got him so freaked out. What's going on tonight? Is the man in the moon freaking out or what? The starstruck astronomer. Things appear to be going a little wacky. Well, it's a good thing we're going to take care of this as soon as we can. Oh, this is different. I'm looking for this guy who defrauded me with a freight credit card the other day. If you find that jerk, don't do anything to him, understand? Just find him for me. Hmm, I wonder if, if he's gotten uh, to the point where he doesn't care or if he wants to be the one to do something. I believe either one. What? You went to the dang moon? Why should I believe you? Did you get the man in the moon's autograph? Oh, that's what was up. That's why the guy saw something weird, because there was that big explosion on the moon. So there were- oh, this is the same. Also the same. Oh, this is most- oh, at most of these guys have the same thing to say. That's too bad. That really is too bad? Okay. Well, let's go uh, check out the back of the town square. I realized I forgot to go back there. This might be the last bonus episode that we do like this, because I know there's going to be dialogue in all the other places once we finish the game, but that'll be post-game, so I haven't quite decided what to do about that yet. Yesterday, I blew through 800 coins at the parlor, but next time I'm definitely winning. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just quit. There you go. That's the spirit. Listen, this is a huge secret, but it's coming out now. I'm a wanted Goomba. What? You want to know what I did that made me come to hi come here to hide out? W why? It's not like I stole money from my parents and got kicked out or anything. Oh dear. I've never bothered to find that before. Yikes. Well, let's see what's going on on this side of town. Should have gone to the other side first because I've got the underground here, but that's alright. Ah, uh, how refreshing. I don't know why, but I never get tired of gazing at the fountain. Maybe I'm just tired. Maybe. Who around you would say something different? Dang, in today's Happy Lucky Lottery, I was as far away from first as possible. But I'll win tomorrow for sure. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I'll be here until tomorrow. I mean, as far away from winning as possible is just getting fourth place, so I don't see what makes that so different. I am willing to bet that Train Guy doesn't have anything new to say. I can always cut us in later if he does, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to change. Alright, you? Hey, did you hear there's an incredible treasure hidden somewhere under this town? Yeah, still, I'd be wary of what people tell you about it. It could be anything. Yeah, well, we already found out what it is. You got anything? Yep. No, that's... No, he says he'll crush you. I don't remember if that's different. Hey, yeah, it's me, Darkly. I like dim places, yeah. It'd be great if the whole world would go as dark as the middle of the night. Hmm. Well, I guess I can see why he'd say that. Hey, is it true Don Pianthus is the same? You know, I suppose you'd have to classify me as a rogue, but I have standards. I only steal from the rich. Who could steal from people who also have cash problems? Speaking of rogues, let's see what's going on back here. Maybe Pierre's had a breakthrough. That's his name, right? Hey, it's the mustache. Remember me. It's Pierre, the unemployed slacker. Oh, oh here we go. So I decided to quit thieving, but I still really want to hang out with Ishnel. 
Hmm, but if I'm not going to be a thief, I have to do something else for him. What should I do, huh? wonder if I'm just dumb. Nope, that is the same. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a... Got a little bit of morning voice going on here. Hey, you. Yeah, Chumpley. <clears throat> Hold on. Hey, you. Yeah, Chumpley. Eh? Was that? You went to the moon? Listen, I like your stories and all, but this is too much. Did you conquer Melon? He likes her stories. Yeah, so I've heard you're trying to save your girl. And here I thought you were just a randomly violent guy full of pent-up anger. It takes more than, a big, than big muscles to be a man. You gotta have a big heart. Fred, where am I gonna get one of... <laughs> I don't think you just go out and get... Oh, I was gonna say you don't just go out and get a big heart. I think he was talking about getting a girlfriend. <laughs> Alright, let's head underground and see how people are doing in the underground town square. There's only two other places we're going to be going after this. For whatever reason, the dialogue is different in uh, Keel Hall Key. And then, of course... No, you know what? Well, while we're here, let's go get Grifty. But yeah, I didn't think to talk to the people in Far Outpost while I was there. Again, I couldn't remember how I'd been doing this previously. I think I probably should have just talked to them there so I wouldn't have to go back... Oh, so I wouldn't have to go back for it now. But, eh. It's not going to make that much of a difference to you guys. And traveling there is not, you know, it's just two screens, it's not, excuse me, it's not that bad. And I guess I get to find out if gaining one level means that I can, uh, bump attack the piranhas now. I'm willing to bet yes. I did find out that I can bump attack the Koopa Trolls and, um, what was the other one? The Hammer Brothers now. Ooh! Oh, that's right, we already read Grifty's thing. Uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> I do want to buy one more badge from Dazzle, but I'm going to do it in a main, in the main episode because I want to make sure everybody knows and sees that I've got what I'm going to get because it's going to affect things. So let's see here. Yo, Eddie the Mask here, sports fan extraordinaire. Know about stylish moves? Just press A with perfect timing during an attack to pull off a stylish move. If you do it right, the crowd will just go nuts, and some attacks have multiple ones. Each attack has different timing for stylish moves, but I'll share two with you. First, try pressing A just as Vivian returns after using her Shade Fist move. And try pressing A right when Bobbery hits the ground after his bomb attack. Sound hard? Well, it ain't easy. That's why you gotta practice, yo. I haven't been keeping track, but maybe he's been telling us moves for all the other partners and they wanted to make sure you got one for everyone before the last chapter? I don't know. I accidentally ran into Pierre the other day at a shop above ground. He said he left the crime biz when his boss fired him for having no thieving skills. I wonder what I'll do now. You could always come back here, I guess. That would be fun. Hey, you just came out of that tiny room with the door that won't open, huh? How'd you get in there, anyway? How'd you get in there? Does it lead anywhere? I must know. Well, it doesn't lead anywhere anymore. It used to lead to the moon, but I don't think he'd believe us if we said that. <laughs> when the world is covered in darkness, the mustached hero will rise. He and his companions will banish the evil back to the depths of the netherworld. This is an ancient legend handed down by my family, in my family. Heh, actually I made that up just now, but it sounds pretty convincing, right? It did sound pretty convincing. I know stuff too, seriously. Like, every dog has his day. Once a year, in fact. I think it's called Dog's Day or something, right? <laughs> something you want to ask old wonky, right? If you pay me five coins, I suppose I can tell you about Zestine's sister. About that Zestine, your rogue port's main square. I've heard her sister is a really good cook as well. She married and moved away a long time ago, but I'd love to try her cooking. That's a reference to the original Paper Mario. Let's hear about the strange ones. About Merlon at the end, at the east side of Rogueport and Merlovely underground. Old Wonky hears that they're from a strange tribe that names people by profession. So, for example, if someone did the same work as Merlon, they'd have the same name. So there could be Merlins all over. Don't you find that strange? Wonky does. Again, another reference to the original Paper Mario. Let's hear about the cold place's secret. There's a pipe down here that leads to a very cold place, old Wonky hears. And if you jump in front of the tree to the far right of the area you come out in, then you get something nice, supposedly. But you won't catch old Wonky out in a chilly place like that, no sir. You get something very nice, that's how I knew about that. Let's hear about Zest Dynamite. 
You know ST, right? She's the really good cook on Rogueport's main square. Well, she has a rare recipe in her repertoire called Zest Dynamite. It's made with a coconut bomb and an egg bomb. And by the way, an egg bomb is made from a fire flower and a mystic egg. And a coconut bomb is made from a fire flower and a coconut. And that's all I know, because Zest lost the rest of the recipe somewhere. It was written down and she lost it. What a tragedy. It sure would be cool if she could make it, though. <laughs> yeah, we have long since made and used that thing. Let's hear about the final tale. I heard this one from my old grandpa. It's a legend about one who will come to this town someday in the future. He will come again when the sky grows dark. He will come when the sky grows dark again. Clothed in red and blue, the hero will bear seven stars and face the darkness. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but I see that you wear red and blue. If the hero turned out to be you, well, I guess that would be a bit much, huh? We're wearing green and blue right now. And I guess that was the final tale for now. I'm not sure if that was a coincidence or if it's actually like planned out like that. All right, I think I'm gonna meet you guys on Keel Hall Key. Hold up, I forgot something very important. I haven't gone into any of the buildings in Rogueport. I don't know why. I sense a shadow falling across the town, mate. Now may be time for me to release all my pent-up explosions, I'm thinking. A lot of people are saying they feel like something's going wrong. I mean, scram! Don't talk to me! My heart's burning for my long-lost love. I've been to Poshley Heights only once in my entire life, you understand. But when I was there, I gave a gift to a gorgeous madam who lingered outside outdoors. I wonder if she treasures that gift, the silver ring I gave her out of purest love. Oh, you mean toodles! No, didn't- No, she was missing a gold ring, never mind. I wonder if that was a mistake or uh, if that's just something else. Let's see, adventures. Oh, of course! Me? I'm done questing for now. Yep, I scaled Hate Song Tower the other day and rescued the fair Princess Eclair. That's one adventure I'm never gonna forget. Nope, it was just too exciting. Wow, so, uh, I, I forgot something really important in here. And it seems like Luigi finished his story before we did. Let's hear about Hate Song Tower. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, and this part is just crazy, but here goes. Hate Song Tower stands atop a jagged, unclimbable cliff beyond the nor northernmost sea. The winds whistle down the cliff, howling like banshees singing songs of hate. People say it's pretty much the scariest place in the world, and I had to go there. Blocking out the bone-chilling howls, I somehow managed to reach the tower's door. I was terrified, but thoughts of Princess Eclair warmed my heart and gave me power. All of my companions felt the same way. They were with me to the bitter end. The door to the tower swung slowly open to reveal an inconceivable darkness. I tried to call out Princess Eclair's name, but I couldn't even breathe because... As I strained my eyes in the darkness, I saw the most terrifying beast of all. The Chestnut King himself appeared before me. He was monstrous and drooling. Puddles of toxic goo dripped from his mouth, melting the very ground at our feet. I couldn't stop shaking, but I gritted my teeth and faced the evil beast dead on. I dodged the king's fangs, jumped onto his chest, and gave him a hammer whack. My swing split the air and crashed dead center onto the chestnut king's skull. Hope powered me up, bro. I was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the king, and I was loving it. This is it, I thought. I can win this. I'll risk it all on my next blow. I gripped my hammer tight and waited for my moment. The tension stung me. Shwack! The ocean winds raged against the tower windows. With that sound as my call to battle, I advanced with no mercy in my heart. And then... And then... I beat him. I defeated the Chestnut King. An even worse beast came next, a nightmare thing, but I beat it too. I rescued Princess Eclair. It was all over. And then I came back to Rogueport and had a light lunch. And that's about it. Huh? You think there's more to the story than that? Not at all, that's it. That's the whole story of the quest for Princess Eclair. The end. But my adventures won't end here, bro. They'll never end. I'd say somebody got rejected by Princess Eclair. And is very sad about it. Hey, you! Remember me? It's me, Bluey! Man, that last battle was hairy. You have no idea. I was burnt to a crisp, but I was actually kind of relieved, if you can believe that. But if you want the whole story, you should just ask Luigi here. What? <laughs> Well, Bluey confirmed that there was a final battle, and, uh, clearly they survived, so at least that much is probably true. That's Luigi's blooper friend, Bluey. It's totally weird to find bloopers on dry land. He seems jolly to be friend to, to a- bleh. He seems jolly to be fried to a golden crisp, though. Did something good happen? 
There's uh, no in-game confirmation of this, but my suspicion is that Luigi got embarrassingly rejected by, uh, by Eclair, and since his partners all kind of dislike him for one reason or another, I think Bluey might be a little happy about it. But, you never know. Who knows what really happened? Luigi knows, but he's not telling. Hey, Mom cooked spaghetti yesterday! It was so delicious! And my brother asked if I wanted to play soccer with him. It was so fun. And Dad said we were all going to take a trip together. I'm so happy. All right. Looks like maybe when that woman said she was thinking of, or, or sort of, it sounded like she was reconsidering what she does. Maybe she was. Everyone was so happy once I finally made some solid travel plans. Imagine that. It's good to take vacations. Yeah, real good. I even got an idea for my novel. It's going to be the adventures of this guy standing right here, Mario. Yeah. If I ever finish it, I'll let you know. I'm not promising any royalties or anything, though. That sounded promising for a minute. I thought maybe he was going to be writing about himself, but I don't know. We'll see. And one more thing to look at. We just got to see this uh, rich guy up here. Come on. Yesterday, I got out of bed for the first time in a while and went for a walk. I wandered under the sky. I had completely forgotten just how blue it can be. No matter how much money I have, I'll never be able to buy that blue, blue sky. But it's given me insights into how I can use the endless sums of money I have. That's good to hear. Alright, I'll uh, just cut us in wherever we're in in the, in the rest of the video. Let's see what these guys have to say. I'm getting sick of island life. I'm a sailor born and bred. I hear the sea calling me. Is it true that they're going to put up a big resort here? I'm completely opposed. You think we could get the Pirate King to curse the developers? That might do it. <laughs> I think he'd probably be willing. I've been to the Glitzpit in Glitzville before, you know. It was absolutely incredible. You should check it out sometime, no joke. Clearly this guy does not know who we are. This place is nice and quiet, but it ain't got excitement. Know what I'm talking about? Sometimes it makes me just want to blow myself up for the heck of it. I think that's all the people we have here, so I'll meet you in Far Outpost. I'm happy to report that Bump Attack does work on Frost Piranhas now. How is Cannon Ride to Surface of Moon? Good? Da, very good. Listen, just between us, I don't like exploding. I get all sooty and dirty, duh. I am too stylish for this. That's the first time I've heard of a bomb say something like that. Real men wear short sleeves, da pow. Ditch the sleeves and the lip guard, da blam. Cannon will not be fired until day we have been waiting for comes. You mean, fired again? Hooray! I've been wanting to shoot that thing off for a very long time, kabang. But after we blow up, we are all hazy and confused, uh? Like frogs in fog, kakrak. Well, that does make sense. Snow all melted from heat of cannon going off, ba -chow. It came back quickly, but for some time it was like spring day here, buffoon. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, too. It's funny, you never really think of the implications of cartoon bombs exploding. Does it snow up on moon, Papluey? Where does snow come from anyway, Papau? Just thinking about it makes head feel like going pub ba boom Comes from clouds. Did nobody teach you that? Many babams suffered just so you could get to the moon, Chabloom. I'm kidding, Chafoom. We like exploding, Chadoom. Well, except for one of us. And it did not even hurt any of us, Chaboom. Except one. <laughs> We've already met that one. <laughs> we only use big bomb cannon for peaceful purpose, Wapadoom. Yeah, I guess it was pretty peaceful getting us up there. I had such nice big explosion thanks to you, Chappelle. But I wanted to go to Moon too, Shakraki. I want to blow up on Moon, Shadoon. Well, I hate to tell you that if you did that now, you'd have no way of getting back. There is more to world than what we see, Bashoom. Truth is always beyond sight. Just like space itself. Yeah, I suppose so. These bombs are a little deep sometimes. Just checking to see if- nope, the guy is not in here anymore. And I do believe that's all the dialogue to see for now. So thank you very much for watching this bonus episode of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. And hopefully I'll see you in the next episode where we go to the Thousand Year Door. Bye-bye.